This is a really cool fly from Matt Winkler. Mostly made from rabbit fur. It's got a cool mallard flank collar on it and a couple really uh, unusual ways to build both the head and the body on this. We're going to use dubbing loops for both of them. And uh, with that, let's get started. So I'm going to take a TMCO 5263 size 4 hook and I'm going to put it in my vise. I'm going to put it in the vise upside down. And I'm going to start some gray 3 aught monochord just behind the eye. And I'm going to dress about maybe the front fourth of the hook. And come forward again. And I'm going to move back about two eye lengths back from the hook eye. And that's where I'm going to tie the eyes in. And I'll set these up on top and just start to figure eight them in. Really, I just use a series of X wraps. And I want to put them on the point side of the hook. So this fly is going to ride with the hook point down. And that's on purpose. So I want to anchor those eyes down. I'll take a couple of parachute wraps around the base just to lock everything in there. And then I can take my hook and put it right side up. Now, typically doing batches of these, I do all those eyes at once. But since we're just doing this one, you saw how I did it. I'm going to add a little shot of head cement to those thread wraps. And I'm going to run the thread all the way back to the bend. I just want to dress the hook shank. It doesn't have to be completely covered. But I want to dress the hook shank all the way back to the bend. And then I'll bump forward just a little bit. And I'm going to take a clump of pearl angel hair here. And I want a pretty good sized bundle. And I'm going to tie it down at the center of its length with a few turns and then fold those long ends back. And that's going to become our tail. And I don't really worry too much about the length just yet. Now I'm going to take a piece of uh, black bar chinchilla rabbit strip, like so. You can see that's got bars on it. And I want to make sure that the end is cut square. And I'm going to come up about a shank length or so worth of, worth of hide. And I'll part that hair. I just wet it with my fingers. And I'll fold it over the hook bend and I'm going to tie it down there with five or six good tight turns of thread. Then I'm going to take this long end and just fold it back out of my way. And I'll bring the thread forward to about the middle of the hook. Now for our body, we're going to make a dubbing loop. So what I want to do here is build a relatively long loop. And Matt does this loop just with his fingers, but I always use my dubbing whirl. It's really up to you. There's not a right or a wrong way to do it. But I'm going to create a dubbing loop that's about six inches long. And I'll just drape that aside for the moment. And I'm going to take some crystal colored Arizona semi-seal dubbing. You can see this is a nice shiny sort of pearlescent dubbing. And I'm going to pull out a clump. You don't want to get too heavy on this. It's easy to overdo this. But I want to stack this bunch and sort of realign it so that I'm getting all the fibers sort of going east-west here. And I'll take that clump and I'll put it inside my dubbing loop. And then once it's in, I can sort of spread it out a little bit. I don't need, I don't want any big lumps or, or clumps in there. And I'll pinch just before the loop and I'll spin my whirl and let it start to twist the, the fur up. I want to make sure that my rabbit fur doesn't get caught up in there. And I'll twist that up nice and tight. So we've got a nice dubbing rope. And I'll use my dubbing brush to sort of pick that out. Give me a nice shaggy body there. Now I'm going to begin to wrap this to form the body. So I'm going to use the bare thread between the dubbing and the hook to 
work back to get the first turn just in front of that rabbit strip. And then I'll just work around my hanging thread here. And I'm not really building, I'm not overlapping wraps, just one turn in front of the other. You can see I can kind of comb those fibers back after each turn. And I'm going to wrap right up to the eyes. And once I get there, I can tie that loop off with a couple tight, tight turns of thread and clip that out. Now I'm going to brush this dubbing down and sort of part it across the top of the hook. And you can see how it creates that belly on the fly. Now I'm going to bring my rabbit strip forward and sort of align everything here. And I'm not going to part the hair right where my tie down is. I'm actually going to leave the hair a little beyond, all the way up to the hook eye. But I want to pull that strip taut across the top pinch it down and then tie it down with a couple turns and then I can trim the long end out. What that does for us is it leaves us this little short stub that sort of sticks up here at the front. It's going to give us a little more profile to the fly. And then I'll sort of blend my rabbit strip back together again. So you can see already this fly is starting to look pretty fishy. So now I'm going to take a mallard flank feather and on the one I did in the magazine I used one that was sort of summer duck colored which means it had a little bit more brown in it. This is just a natural color, uh, kind of gray and white, uh, speckled. And what I want to do, I've stripped all the fluff off the bottom. What I want to do here is peel these fibers down and create a separation point and tie this down just in front of the collar and I want to anchor that down good and tight. These are prone to coming out if you don't get them anchored tightly, so be careful to get that down there snug. Now I'm going to grab my hackle pliers, and I'll grab the base of this feather, and I want to fold these fibers back. So what I'll do is I'll pinch them and sort of work them up and down, creasing them back like you would a wet fly collar creasing them back to one side of the feather stem. And I'm just going to take just a couple turns here. Just one turn in front of the other. And then I'll tie that off with a couple turns of thread. Again, make sure you get it anchored tightly and trim that stem out. Then I'll kind of come through with my brush that actually folded really nicely. And I'll just anchor things down there. Now for the head, we're going to build another dubbing loop. Just here behind the eyes. And I'll bring the thread right up to the hook eye. I'll set my dubbing whirl in the loop and I just take one leg and put it in my material spring to keep that from falling out in the meantime or tangling with my thread. And in the case of the head, I'm going to use just a regular non-barred chinchilla rabbit strip. And what I want to do here, this is a magnum strip. This is a magnum strip. And I'm going to take and lift up a clump of fur from the hide. And cut it off just down close to the hide. So I've got a clump like so. And I'll take this and sort of peel out some of that softest under fur. And then I'll set that aside on my desk. I'm going to do that a couple more times to start to build the material for my loop. So I'll take another clump and cut it off the hide. And clean it out. And I'll stack that clump right on top of the first. And then a third clump. And now I can take these, this first clump that is double stacked, and I'm going to put it in the dubbing loop up here close to the hook. And then I'll take the single stack 
and put it right below. Now what I want to do here is I want to spread this fur out a bit. I want to make sure I've got enough to build the head. And you can sort of bump the butt ends to square them up a bit. And I don't necessarily want the full length of the fur from the hide out the tip side. You can see that's a little offset. So once I've got that in, I'll spin my loop around and I'll cut these butt ends off as close as I can. I just want to shorten that rabbit fur down a bit. And then I'll pinch just below the fur and spin that loop up a bit. And that's going to give us a nice rabbit fur chenille, like so. Again, I'll run my brush through it. That's just a good idea to do on any sort of dubbing brush. Give that one more little spin there. And this is going to create both the collar and the head of this fly. So what I'll do here to start is I'm going to take two turns with the rabbit behind the eyes. And you can see I'll kind of comb them back. One, two. Oh, let's go one more. There we go. Now when I cross, I'm going to come over the top and down on the far side of the eye and under the hook in front and over the top again on the far side of the eye. Back up and then I'm going to finish with just a couple more turns, maybe just one, one and a half. I've got just about exactly the right amount of hair here to do this to finish off just behind the hook eye. And I'll tie off that loop just behind the eye. I'll come in and trim that loop out. I'll wet my fingers a bit and sweep all this fur back just to build a clean little head. And I'll come in and whip finish. And finally I'll just come through and rub my, run my dubbing brush through all that fur to loosen it up from where I've matted it down. I'll check the length of my tail. It's a bit long, a little longer than the hook. And you can see how I've pulled that forward over the top. So when I come in, I want to cut just through the hide. And then I'll trim the flash just a bit short of that. And I really try not to get it perfectly square. You can see how I can come in from the ends to sort of taper that cut. We'll sweep everything back and there is our finished Matt Winkler Kamikaze Sculpin. You can see it's got a big wide head. Uh, this fly is named a Sculpin, but man, it can imitate a lot of different small bait fish. Um, in this color, small whitefish or sucker. Um, there's a tan color that's a baby brown trout, and the olive, of course, matches up with the Sculpin very nicely. But that is a great, quick, easy little pattern to tie. Um, really nicely barred, swims really nicely in the water. It's got a lot of movement, a lot of volume. You can see the outside diameter from that mallard flank has really grown. Really a cool fly. You should tie some up and take them out for a little swim this spring.